3D Camera Tracker is found under the Perspective category, and this is an effect, but it's really just a massive utility that allows you to create 3D cameras and insert 3D layers into footage seamlessly. Now, I actually have an entire course on Skillshare dedicated to the 3D Camera Tracker and tracking both 2D and 3D objects into shot footage, and that's because there's a lot more than just understanding how this effect works in order to actually use it effectively but I'm gonna do my best to quickly walk through how this effect works and some best practices to get you started. First things first, I need to drag out 3D Camera Tracker onto this video clip. Now right away, this is going to start analyzing my footage and we'll see a progress bar right here. But while that's happening, I should point out that my scene is extremely simple. There is no moving objects. The only thing that's moving is me moving the camera around. I shot this without stabilization on my camera, which is better for 3D camera tracking. And since nothing is passing in front of anything else, there's no motion in the scene, it's able to pull a track really well. If you have objects or people or vehicles moving around in your frame, it's going to be more difficult and it's probably going to take more work. But for this particular shot, it's already analyzed the entire scene and tracked the camera movement, which is why we're seeing all of these little X's. These are the camera trackers that are giving After Effects the data it needs to reconstruct the camera movement so I can insert things into this shot. Now, before we dive into what to do next with a tracked shot, I first wanna show you that we have the option to choose a shot type up at the top. I shot this camera on my smartphone and I wasn't zooming in or out. So I'm using a fixed angle of view. That's the default, that's what I want. If you're working with footage that was shot on a zoom lens and the zoom changed throughout the shot, then you're gonna to wanna to choose variable zoom. And if you know the angle of view that the lens was used to shoot the footage with, you can choose this and then specify that angle of view right here. This is all information just to help the effect know more about your footage and not have to guess as much, which could produce better results. The next section is show track points and we're set to 3D solved. I could change this to 2D source and it's gonna show me the track points that it used on just a 2D plane on the X and Y axis that the effect tracked to then convert to 3D data that can be viewed under the 3D solved trackers. And that's why some are bigger than others here because the larger the tracker, the closer it is to the camera. If you're familiar with the built-in tracking tools of After Effects, imagine tracking this many points on a clip manually. Not only would it be extremely time consuming to set that many track points, but the actual tracker would take so much longer than this effect does, which is why it's so powerful. All right, I'm gonna switch that back to 3D solved. We can say render track points. If I play this back right now, my track points will disappear, but if I turn that on, they'll appear. So if for some reason you wanted to render this out with those track points visible, you absolutely could. Now I'm gonna go to a point right here where all these trackers are kind of overlapping each other. If you wanna be able to see individual tracker points a little bit more clearly, you can use the track point size to scale them down or up, depending on where you are in your scene. Back here, they were a little bit smaller, so maybe I wanna make them bigger to make it more obvious. Next is the target size, and that is the little red circle that's showing up between multiple track points. So if I just click and drag right here to have a selection of all these points, that circle right in the middle is my target. So I can increase that size just as a visual reference to be able to see how it's aligned to my footage. Now, before we get on to actually tracking an object into this footage, I wanna twirl down the advanced category and show you these controls. First of all is the solve method, and it's set to auto detect. So the effect is attempting to detect what the best method for tracking this particular shot is. But I could change this to typical, mostly flat scene, or tripod pan. Again, if you know how your footage was shot, you could choose one of these options. If it was shot on a tripod and the tripod isn't moving around, you're just rotating the camera using that tripod head, then set this to tripod pan and it will allow the effect to track in a way specifically for that type of camera movement. If the footage was a mostly flat scene, think shooting the side of a building or a flat tabletop without a lot of things on it, that might give you better results. Typical is best used for when your scene has lots of different types of objects in it, just like mine. So I could change this to typical and it will resolve the camera based on the tracking data it already found, but the average error value right here did not change because auto detect guessed that the best method to use for this shot was typical anyway, so it was no different. Now what average error means is the average distance change between the 2D tracked points and the 3D solved points. So there's an average error of 1.38 pixels. If it was a perfect track, the average error would be zero. So you can use this value as a reference point 
For if you track your scene and you're not happy with the results, take a look at that value and try to get that lower. One way you could do that is by choosing points that you don't want to be included in the tracking data. So I could take any point in my scene just by clicking on it and pressing the delete button and it's going to resolve with that point excluded. Now my average error is slightly less, but it's negligible. So that's really dependent on what your shot looks like and what's in that scene. But selecting points like that is a great way to be able to disregard tracking points on objects that are moving and could be throwing off your camera. Next is detailed analysis, and this is going to just make the effect do extra work to attempt to make a better camera track. It's probably going to take longer, although it's still pretty fast, and it's not always gonna give you better results, but I'm gonna check it on and see if we have a lower average error. Now, even with detailed analysis on, I still have an average error of 1.37 pixels. It's no different than before, so that really doesn't guarantee anything, but it's definitely worth attempting if you have a difficult time tracking your shot. The next checkbox is auto delete points across time. And what this means is that if you select a point and delete it, then it's going to remember that you've deleted that and keep it deleted across time. And then finally we have hide warning banner. And if I just get that banner back, this is simply going to just remove that banner, disable it so if you wanna see that footage without that banner while it's analyzing, you can just disable it. All right, I'm gonna undo back to where we were before detailed analysis was enabled. Now that I've got my solved camera track again, I'm gonna collapse up advanced and we'll move on to how to actually use this data and start inserting things into my scene. One of the first things you wanna do is establish a ground plane and origin for your 3D scene using these tracking markers. Now, I don't actually have too many trackers on this work surface, and that's what I'd like to be my ground plane. So what I'm gonna do is just scrub through here a little bit and try to find a few points that might work for me. I see two right over here that are tracked to the surface of this bookshelf. So I'm gonna select that point just by clicking it, and then I'm gonna pan over to this side of the frame and try to find something that's also on the surface or at least close to it. These two points seem to work. So I'm gonna hold shift, click and drag, which will automatically lasso around those two points. And then I need to try and find one other part of my surface that I can use to triangulate those points. These two are pretty much in a straight line, so I don't really have a good sense of depth. This one right here might work though, so I'll shift click on it, and now I have my target aligned to this plane. And the reason for this target is to kind of visually see whether or not those are good points to establish a ground plane. I can tell that that target doesn't look like it's aligned to that surface very well, so I'm gonna try and add in a few more points. I'm gonna shift click here, I'm gonna grab this point right here, and the more tracking points that you use generally can help you produce more accurate ground planes. So I'm actually going to move my camera around which loses my selection, but I might be able to use some of the tracking data that shows up on the side and have a rough estimation of what this surface should actually be. Now with all of those points selected, in fact, I'll even grab this one here, that target is looking much better aligned to that tabletop. I'm gonna say that I'm happy with that and then right click on the target and go to set ground plane and origin. What this does is essentially sets the origin point or the zero comma zero comma zero position value to the center of that target and aligns that XZ plane to that target's orientation. But we don't see anything yet. What I need to do next is right click on that and choose one of these other options. So I could create text, solid or null objects each with a camera that's matched to the shot footage, or I could create a shadow catcher camera and light that allow me to actually insert shadows into my scene as well. Any of this can be done after the fact, but I typically like to use create null and camera just so I have a null object in my scene that I can reference and a camera that's already set up to work with this footage. Now this section right here says create seven text layers, solids or nulls, and that's because I have seven points selected. So if I choose one of these options, it's going to create layers for each one of my selected track points. I don't necessarily need that, but I may want to grab one of those track points later on, which you can do at any time just by clicking on the effect, right clicking on that track point, and then choosing one of these options. I'm gonna go back up to create null and camera, and that's going to align that null object right where that target layer was. So I'm gonna rename this null object origin, just so I have that information, 
And then I have a 3D camera tracker layer as well. If I switch my view from active camera to say custom view one, and then back out on this 3D scene a little bit, eventually I'm going to see there's the path for the motion track data on that camera. This is After Effects recreation of how I moved the camera throughout this scene. So if I switch this to the left view, and reposition this so we can see that camera again. That Z axis arrow is the direction I was pointing the camera. I moved down and towards the desktop, stopped, panned up a little bit and dollied back out. So we can see that tracked data in action just by viewing it this way. But you might've noticed I had to zoom out a lot to be able to fit this camera movement into view. And that's because the scene scale is just way, way larger than what you typically would work in 3D and After Effects. And another best practice is to normalize your scene so that the tracked scene scale matches more closely to the default scene scale of After Effects. And I learned this technique from Hashi over at Red Giant, and he has a fantastic video explaining exactly how to do this. So if you're interested, click on the card above now to go watch that. He even has a free preset made by the team at Workbench to automate this process. The first thing I wanna do is make a new solid layer. So I'll go up to layer, new, solid, and 1920 by 1080 is fine. I'm gonna name this ground and click OK, and then enable the 3D switch for that layer. Immediately, it goes to the center of my frame, right where that origin point is, because that's the origin of any new 3D layer. But it's so much smaller, and this is what I was talking about. The tracked data scene scale is so much larger than the actual comp scene scale. So that's what we're going to correct. Now, I just noticed that my tracker points are not going away, and that's because render track points is not turned off. So I'm gonna uncheck that so it's not in the way anymore. Now what I wanna do is try to align this solid to the surface of the table. Currently, it's pointed at the camera. It's rotated 90 degrees from where I want it. So I'm gonna click and drag this while holding shift to snap it 90 degrees, and then just scale it up so that this is much easier to see. Now this alignment is actually looking pretty good. If I scale it up to the point that I can see it on the left edge of the desk, that actually looks like it lines up. I'm going to add a grid effect to this layer and change this to width slider, and then maybe turn that width up a little bit just so I can see through the layer and see if my perspective is off at all. Now this line right here is not aligned to the front of the desk, so I'm just gonna rotate that ever so slightly and try to make that a little bit more accurate. But with that little adjustment, it's actually lining up fairly well. It is off a little bit in the back, but I think I'm gonna be able to get away with this. So I'll get rid of that grid. The next step is to take the 3D tracked camera and parent it to that ground layer. Now my camera is going to move wherever this layer moves and scale with it if I change the scale. So I'm gonna press R to bring up the orientation for this layer and make sure the orientation is set to 270 on the X, zero on the Y, and zero on the Z. When I do this, nothing visually has changed. But what did change is the orientation of this layer, which in turn changed the orientation of all of the tracked motion on this 3D camera, since it's parented to that layer. And what this means is if I make a new solid and leave it at 1920 by 1080, let's just change the color so it's easier to identify, and make that 3D, it's going to show up right at the center of that layer and be aligned properly towards the camera but it's still very small. I can fix this just by clicking on the ground layer and then clicking and dragging on one of the transform controls while holding shift. As I do this, not only is the ground layer scaling down, but the camera is scaling down with it, essentially making the scene scale much smaller. Now, this is a little bit difficult to do interactively in the comp, so instead of that, I'm gonna press S on the keyboard to bring up the scale property, zoom in a little bit closer, and my goal is to get the width of that blue solid to hit the center line of my comp, which is right here. I want the width of this solid to match the width of the comp pretty closely. So I'm gonna scale it up just a little bit more until the edges of that layer are pretty close. Maybe just a little bit more. I think that's going to work. And with that, my scene is completely normalized and I can actually now unparent the 3D tracked camera. I can even get rid of these solids, but I'm just gonna disable their visibility for now. Now, if I go to type out some text, and I'll change that color so it's nice and easy to see, and I'll even give it an outline. If I make it 3D, it's going to align to that surface, and I can even recenter it by going to 960 by 540 on that position value, and I can scrub through my footage, 
and it's totally aligned to that layer. And besides just the orientation of the text, the benefit of normalizing it is that the text size didn't really change going from 2D to 3D. So if again, I were to make a new solid layer, clicked OK and made that 3D, the relative scale is going to be basically the same since we've normalized the scene scale. And that just makes everything with 3D camera tracking much easier to deal with. Now any 3D supported effect that you enable will likely show up right in that origin point and be to the scene scale that you actually set it to be. Now from here I can make that text larger and let's say that I want it to be aligned to that box. Well, I could try shifting this around in 3D space and probably get it pretty close maybe something like this and then move it up and play this back. And it's actually doing a pretty good job of keeping that text right where it should be. Now all that 3D tracked data that we had, if I go back to my original clip, is still there, but unfortunately through the normalization process, it's become inaccurate. The actual tracking data didn't get normalized, just the content that I created after generating these track points. So if you know that you wanna place something on a specific surface, then you need to make sure that you generate a solid for it before normalizing and along with the ground plane, parent any of those solids or null objects to that ground layer before normalizing. However, if you go grab that free normalized track script from Workbench, again, you can find it in that same video I referenced earlier or in the description of this video, you will be able to convert that tracked data to your normalized scene and continue working like normal. But for this example, I think it's gonna work out just fine. So I'm just gonna align this text a little bit better to the top of that box and play this back. And with relatively few steps, I've been able to track in convincingly a text layer into this footage. You can sell this effect even more if you turn on the motion blur for any layers you're compositing and match that motion blur to what was in the footage. So that looks a little bit extreme to me. So I'm gonna go up to composition, composition settings, go into advanced, and turn my shutter angle down. The lower this number, the shorter your motion blur trails will be. So I'm gonna turn this down to say 100, click OK, and I think that matches a little bit better now. Another thing that could really sell this is if I matched the colors to things in my scene. So this is a black frame right here, and this little minifig of Doc from Back to the Future is white, so I'm gonna sample those colors to make this match my scene just a little bit better. Now obviously that's a drastic difference, so maybe I wanna increase it just a little bit to make it brighter and stand out better. But referencing colors and tones in your scene is a great way to make your track look even more convincing. But with that, we've covered all of the 3D camera tracker effects, as well as some best practices for incorporating graphics into that tracked footage. And that's everything you need to know about the 3D camera tracker. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.